Jeez. So 13 million views at the time of recording this video. You guys are crazy. And since so many of you wanted a tutorial, I thought I'd give the people what they wanted. So uh, enjoy the video. All right, so if you guys are wondering what the reel was shot on, iPhone, literally, literally simple as that. Camera app, nothing special. Luke, can you back me up here? It's facts. Facts. All right, so setting up the reel is pretty simple. You just need your phone and a tripod. All right, so firstly, I need to shoot the bit where I was like jumping and doing like this. Zoom! Just go into the video mode. Make sure you're on 60 frames a second because you want to like do some speed ramping later on. And then just like hold your finger on, if it works, hold your finger on like the sky because you want the sky to lock exposure. You want to lock the autofocus so it doesn't hunt when you're doing like all these jumping things. And then when you do the time lapse, you're also going to do the exact same thing. So you're going to swipe over the time lapse, hold the sky, and then you shoot the time lapse. So make sure they're both the same exposure, locked in the same autofocus bit, and then you just merge them together in editing. It's actually quite simple. I shouldn't be famous. All right guys, so once you're in Premiere Pro, it's time to set up your timeline. My two can settings are 30 frames a second, because I think that's what Instagram likes the most. It gives the smoothest playback on your phones when you're on Instagram. And also 1080 by 1920, because that is a vertical frame. Because that is a vertical frame. So step one, I took my real time running jumping shot and I put it into video layer one. And what I did here is I speed ramped this clip. That's why I shot it in 4K 60 frames a second. So when I slow it down to 30, I get 50% speed. So that's pretty cool. I like to use speed ramping because it helps to confuse the viewers a bit more, especially when there's like a time lapse moving really quickly and I'm moving in slow motion. Um, I got a lot of comments up, people asking like, oh, how long did I stand there for? In reality, I was only there for like five seconds. <laughs> so to get to the speed ramp section you can just right click on this little square here and then go to time and then time remapping and then you can uh, make your changes here okay so step two i overlaid the time lapse clip on top of video layer one and video layer one is obviously the real time running shot and then i masked out the sky Obviously at the beginning of the video, the sky doesn't move. So what I had to do was place the time-lapse clip on the beat drop and then add a frame hold at the beginning of the frame and extend that right to the beginning of the video so that the sky is completely static when the beat hasn't dropped. And then when the beat drops, it cuts into the timeline. As you can see here, when I jump, my head is covered by the clouds of the layer. So what I had to do was duplicate the speed ramped clip, put it on top of the sky time-lapse layer and then mask myself out only. However, especially with the framing of this reel, I made sure that when I was jumping and I was standing, I wasn't like kind of in the clouds. My head wasn't obstructing any of the time lapse. It'll make it a lot harder for me to mask myself out. This is the bit that I think confused people the most and made them think that I was standing out there for a very, very long time. So to do this, I had to color match my jumping bit to the actual sky time lapse. I did this by flicking the layer visibility on and off of the Lumetri color just to make sure that it matched the sky. You can see here in my effect controls panel that I've done a lot of keyframes and this is just changing like the tint, the exposure, contrast, shadows, just altering it to make sure that it matches the time lapse otherwise it wouldn't look very good. After exporting the video you can see that there are little birds in the time lapse that are like flicking around and I just really thought that that would kind of distract the viewer's eyes and not make it as clean as it could look. So what I did was I imported the video into Photoshop and put it in a video timeline and then with any frames within that video that had little birds just dotted around the place I'd use a spot healing tool and just remove them and then I'd export it so yes I had to do this frame by frame and just check every single frame it took a little bit of time but it was worth it then after that I'd export the bad boy upload it to Instagram and then that's how I got my blow up reel tasty tasty <laughs> well I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I know it was short but I hope it gave you an idea of how I made it hope you guys enjoy the next vlog and I'll see you guys next week Bye.